Welcome to Ken's Talk Payroll Tutorial, how to calculate federal tax withholding. It's, it's a big get guessing game at the beginning of every year and throughout the year to figure out how much do I need to pull out of my employee's pay so that they do or do not owe taxes or get a refund at the end of the year. That's how you calculate federal tax. The IRS gives you guidelines for this in the publication 15, also called the Circular E. I'm going to show you how to code those formulas into Microsoft Excel using the IF function and we'll get into a little bit uh, more detail about this payroll scrap and we're going to try to do it as fast as we can because I know you're busy. So uh, here's the thing that matters when it comes to calculating your federal withholding. There's something called your allowances and you fill this out on a W-4 and you figure out how many allowances you're going to have. The more allowances that your employee takes, the less that their withholding is going to be, the less withholding tax that's going to go on your 941 report to the federal government. So in this example, I'm just going to make it simple and do one. And this is a, a payroll form that's for a weekly payer. I went and I grabbed the uh, snapshot from the Circular E team. And what it does is it'll show you, this is a table that uh, a lot of people you know, don't know how to program this table into Excel, so we're going to get into that uh, right now. So I've got a, an example of myself. I gave myself 40 hours back at the beginning of January. And this year, uh, the Congress passed laws late, and there were two separate set of rates going out. A lot of people made mistakes this year in, on setting their withholding rates at the beginning of the year here in 2013. It's a common problem. So in my payroll file here, we have a column over here called, uh, column BY, called Current Federal Tax Withheld. And if you're adjusting to one of my payroll files, or yeah, if you're doing that, you're gonna you can just type over this this column. You know, you've got Ken Braverman, that's me here. Uh, first first week payroll period is 1-6, January 13, uh, January 6, 2013. You can just simply go in here and you can type over however much was actually withheld if your system differ, uh, is differing from the formulas that I have. But these are the correct formulas, and I'm going to show you how to code them in case you want to know. So. When it comes to uh, pulling money out of the paycheck and figuring how much is going to go to the federal government, the, uh, the, um, there's something called the uh, taxable wage base or the wages subject to withholding. And that's a more complicated video that I'll go over later, but it has to do with, you know, someone gets paid, they have an hourly rate. In this case, uh, I've set my hourly rate at $10 an hour. They've got a total number of hours times that out hourly rate. They also have a whole other bunch of things that go into their pay that take it from gross wages, which is the very at the top end, just your hours times your rate and then your bonuses and your commission, all that stuff. There's that gross amount. Uh, you get to reduce that a little bit before you have your wages sub subject to uh, federal withholding. There are exemptions, um, standard deductions or exemptions that you have on your W-4. They're $75 for each one here on uh, when you're doing a weekly payroll person. So in this formula, I take my, my gross wages and you re reduce out this federal allowance of $75 times the number of withholdings that you chose here for the employee. That gets you a wages subject to federal withholding. It's more complicated what builds up that number because your company or your employee could have many different types of taxable or non-taxable things that go into building that number. So keep that in mind that it is a complicated thing coming up with this number. But once you do have this number, your wages subject to federal withholding, then you can take these formulas and you can plug these in. Now here's the one for, for single. This is your single person right here and this is if your person is married. Notice you had to choose back here whether or not the person is single or, or married. Married, yes or no. It comes into play. So here it is. It's saying, well, if the person made between $42 and $214 throughout the week, they owe 10% of the amount over $42 that they made. So the first $42 is free. You're not going to pay any federal tax on that. But the amount between $42 and $214, uh, that amount there is at 10%, and then it starts going up. It says, well, if they made over $214, but, but less than $739, they owe $17.20, plus they owe 15% of this amount between $214 and $739. So how do you, and it goes all the way down for all these rates. Well, here's how you program that. And I have this formula right here. We're going to zoom in a little bit, and I'll show you how to do this. So let's double click on this cell. 
So this formula that pops out looks like a lot of junk, but it does follow a pattern, and it's pretty easy to do once you get on a roll. First thing I did is I rounded everything to two digits, because there's always, that's what the, this very beginning round formula is. You just type in round, and then beginning parentheses, and at the very end of this thing, you put a, a comma, a two, and an end parentheses, and that will round the final number to two digits, which is always helpful, because when you file reports, there's always rounding errors. If you don't do that, it'll cause problems. But here's the main formula. It's the if formula, okay, right here. If allows you to say, if something is something, then do this. If something is something, then do this. And it's, it's uh, these are called like nested ifs, where you can say, if something is like this, and then if it's false, I want to do another thing to it. And if that's false, I want to do another thing to it. If that's false, I want to do another thing to it, which is the way that you code this formula. So I'll walk you through just the beginning, and then you'll figure it out from there. If BV4 is this cell that is saying the uh, wages subject, subject to withholding, if that's less than $42, because if you look down, the $42 is the first one that, that we care about. If it's less than $42, then the person doesn't know any tax at all. So if this is less than or equal to $42, zero, they don't know any tax. Now, because we want to check at the next highest dollar amount after 42, in this case it's going to be 214, you, you don't do what the false answer would be in the if, which is typing in an answer here. You say, oh, there's another if I need to do. This is the nested if part. So you do, if it's less than 42, zero, then you do another if and another beginning parentheses. And is that BV4 less than or equal to 214, comma, then you have to take your wages subject to withholding, which is BV4 in this scenario, minus 42, and that gives you the difference between 214 and 42, and you multiply that by 0.1, which is 10%. Now we got to go to the next one, comma, if, beginning parentheses, BV4 is less than or equal to 739, and then it, and it just goes in that order. You can see we follow everything down here, and that formula will follow that. So hopefully, if you, hopefully you got that. If it was too fast, go and rewind. Same thing goes with the married portion, which is over here. You can see if I have a married portion, it's the same idea, 160 and 503 and, and all this. It goes over that. Now this works because anytime you have a certain amount of money that the person made, because you write your ifs in this order, you say less than or equal to the number and less than or equal to the number, it always finds the right pocket that the person's wages are in and charges them the right rate and does the right thing. Uh, it's, it's the beauty of the if function. So take a look at that kind of code. This should help you out. You can then change these every year when the government changes their rates. You can just go into this column and, and change all these rates and then pull them down and apply them to everyone. You know, I have 10 different employees in this payroll file. So I can just copy that formula down whenever we change these rates at the end of the year. And if things still didn't work and it still didn't match your records, you just go into the federal withhold amount and say, oh, I actually withheld $20, not 1650 You can just type over 20 And it will, it will pull 20 right here on the pay stub. And we'll filter $20 through to all the reports, like your 941 report will show that the federal withholding was 20 right there. So there's different ways to do it, but uh, there's the right way to do it with the proper formula, and then there's the way that your company may have actually withheld, which happened to a lot of people this year, so don't worry about it. If you're interested in using one of my Excel templates, they're not too expensive. They're usually around a few hundred dollars, can be less, can be more, depending if I already have something for your business or need to do too much work for it. And um, I can help you understand your payroll and take control of everything in Microsoft Excel because you can, and it's easy, and you can see everything right in front of you, and that's what I do. So contact me, Ken, at kenstalk.com, or if you have any other questions, let me know, and I will do more videos on how to do payroll in Excel.